the holder of horror. In any city, in any country, go to the nearest morgue or mortuary and locate either a Dina, morgue attendant, or autopsy technician and ask to speak to the holder of horror. Almost instantly after this question is asked, the handler will ask if you wish to see your mother's face. Calmly answer, Take me to the end of the hall. He or she will ask you if you wish to see the rest of your family, as it is an important call. Once again, calmly answer, Take me to the end of the hall. With a grave look of repugnance on their face, they will wave for you to follow. If they do not wave, and you blindly follow them around the corridor, you may accidentally follow the rest of the guide. And when you approach the door, the door will pull you into the chamber of madness, leaving you to see every horrific sight that ever existed since the creation of time to the point of your ultimate epitome. The worst part is that you will be trapped in this loop as time is reborn. Follow this guide carefully. As you follow them, you will instantly begin to notice that the building's normal interior design changes dramatically when you turn around the corridor. Almost all of the walls seem to be covered in a tree bark material with what appears to be blood dripping from the bark. You may notice disfigured corpses pinned to the walls with most of their flesh ripped out, some organs simply dangling. Should you touch any of the corpses dangling or lying about, you may be pulled forcefully toward the corpse. If this happens, you may hear screams. Should the screams surprise you, you will become one with the corpse, and it will slowly devour you as its horrifying screams paralyze you. You will not be devoured forever, so hope that it will be a quick consumption if this unfortunate fate happens to you. If you are being pulled by the screams, try to remember what the sound of your surrogate mother was like. And should you be lucky enough to survive the encounter, you will be let go from the reanimated. You will always feel the fear and doom by that particular corpse that may have grabbed you, however. As the hall trenches on deep underground, the bark-like material will start forming the material of decaying flesh and skin of all former living beings. You will notice the rotting odor of something unexplained along with this. Reanimated corpses resembling the rest of your family on the walls screaming your name and for help. Do not give in or you will meet the fate mentioned above. The mortician who may lead you all this way will now present you with two matches and a glowing vial. Do not open this vial in the physical plane of existence. The mortician will show you what appears to be a door, which is completely black, with no sign of a doorknob or even a physical material. Light one of the matches and hold your arm out into the non-existent door. Search in the darkness, and when you see the doorknob made of flesh, turn it counterclockwise quickly. If your arm is still in this void when the match goes out, you will lose that limb to the void instantly. Once the doorknob is turned, you will notice reality will warp completely around, and that you will be on the mirror opposite side of the door, seeing a horrifically twisted version of yourself and the mortician, you are in the place that time forgot. Do not turn around and do not affix your gaze to anything inside of this room until you light your second match. The doorway you seemed to enter from will go totally black. You may safely turn around and navigate the darkness. On the ethereal plane, you must never have a conscious thought that a floor, a wall, or a ceiling exists, or it will instantly drop you, rip you apart, or crush you. Your boundaries of reality give existence to this plane while illumination is present. Keep walking, and
and you will see an ancient hatch on the floor that your small match will light up. Pull it open with your remaining hand. If your match goes out before this, you will be trapped in the sanctum of the Forgotten, where screams, pain, and terror from the unknown bombard you for the rest of the infinity. When you open the hatch enough to fit through, jump inside and dispose of the match. You will enter from the ceiling. You are now in a very simple room, where furniture remains static in an inverted position on the floor. You will see the back of an old man's body, floating lonely in the middle of the room. Do not say anything yet, or his screams of agony will cause your eyes to burst. He will slowly turn around, and you will notice that the front of his body is completely ripped off, exposing his organs and two distinct black hole-like eye sockets that are almost encouraging you to look into them. Do not look at his empty eyes, and do not have an expression of surprise or fear on your face while facing the old man, or your soul will be drained from you into his mind. Very calmly ask, What is the essence of horror? He will now test your will. Within a split second, he lets out a horrifying, mind-numbing shriek with a particularly violent and unbelievably haunting noise that will cause you to break down violently. You will never forget the time you heard this noise. Darkness will consume your vision temporarily so it would be best to turn away from the old man before you writhe in the agony of the horrors that have been encountered since the conception of time. The room will begin to spin, and the walls will start bleeding something very dark from the floor up to the ceiling. The floor will almost melt from hardwood into a metal floor covered with rotting flesh. The most disgusting odour will enter your nostrils, selectively or not. The ceiling will give way to an animated pile of bodies, dripping some of their aged, rotting flesh, bone, and sinew to the already covered floor, and possibly onto you. You will also hear the sound of skulls cracking, children screaming in violent pain, organs being shredded by something sharp, executions of men, grouping of women, and many more sounds that will involuntarily cause you to vomit. Do not openly embrace the constant feelings of lost hope and abandonment that will surge through your mind and your veins as this occurs. The madness you will encounter will be one you have never felt. If you are unable to remember a family member's laughter while this state of hilarity ensues, it is too late, and you will become a victim of the old man's terror forever. Eventually, time unknown based on the number of sins you committed will cause the shriek to stop. It's difficult at this point for many seekers to get back on their knees, and many seekers forget in their madness to not show the old man their expression or look into his eyes. When you are finally on your two feet again, the old man will turn around once again and slowly reface you, but this time with a humanly appearance. You notice he now looks like a charming older man from the early 20th century. He pulls a chair toward you and asks you to sit down and recounts the story of the birth of the reality of horror. Eventually, he will finish his story and he will tell you that smashing the vial you were given will open up a momentary doorway to the place you were before. He will ask to shake your hand. Continue to politely refuse as kindly as he may offer as your body could implode by the touch of living horror. Eventually, he will present to you a small jewelry box lined with gold that you can safely remove from his hand. Do not open it, no matter what the whispers from the box or voices in your head say. The old man will slowly turn around to face away forever. Take this time to break the vial against the wall or floor and you will find yourself going through the rip 
in the realm of terror. After seeing a bright flash, you will wake up on one of the autopsy tables. As you get off of the bed, you notice that the building will be empty. Find the exit and escape before Terra finds the entrance to your mind. The jewelry box is object 1485 of 538, and something tells you shouldn't open it if you wish to preserve the sanity of you and the ones you love.